In the U.S., there's concern tonight as 34 states relax restrictions and many Americans get ready to head back to work. Over a million people have been infected with COVID-19 in the U.S. More than 67,000 people have died. That's more than any other country. As the numbers spike across the U.S., the Trump administration claims there is evidence COVID-19 originated in a lab in China. As Jennifer Johnson reports, it's fueling tension about how the outbreak has been handled. The Trump administration is again pointing the finger at China. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo claims there is evidence the COVID-19 virus came from a Wuhan lab, but isn't providing any proof for his claims. President Trump is very clear. We're going to hold those responsible accountable, and we'll do so on a timeline that are, is our own. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is not ready to say exactly how this started. We continue to work uh, very closely uh, with our partners and allies and indeed uh, independently on uh, many security issues that are important for Canadians. Uh, at this point, we are not drawing any firm conclusions. American intelligence agencies are continuing to investigate whether a lab in China was the origin for this deadly pandemic. Meanwhile, from crowded beaches to reopened malls to protests across the U.S., more and more Americans are shoulder to shoulder, no protective masks, abandoning social distancing rules. It's in God's hands what happens to my, me and my health. White House Coronavirus Task Force members are sounding the alarm. It's devastatingly worrisome to me personally because if they go home and infect their grandmother or their grandfather, they will feel guilty for the rest of our lives. But some governors say they can't stop residents from not playing by the rules. In Ohio, a complete about face. The governor first ordered shoppers to wear masks, then reversed his rule. People were, were not going to accept the government telling them what to do. Uh, and so we put out, you know, dozens and dozens of orders. Uh, that was one that it just went too far. In Georgia, one of the first states to reopen, residents showing little concern at crowded indoor malls and outdoor parks, even as its COVID-19 death rate continues to increase. It's a little shocking to see so many people um, just disregarding human life, not wearing protective masks, not staying six feet apart. Staying home um, and being social distanced has saved lives. If this pattern continues, doctors and nurses on the front lines fear another surge in cases. Jennifer Johnson, Global News, Washington. We've been told that everyone is susceptible to COVID-19, but in the U.S., doctors are seeing a stark divide in who's getting sick. Ethnic communities are especially vulnerable in this outbreak. As Jackson Prosco reports, experts believe historic inequities are to blame. Across the U.S., doctors and nurses have noticed a disturbing trend when it comes to who's ending up in emergency rooms. People of color are being hit disproportionately hard by COVID-19. I'm surprised about the magnitude of the impact. It's really, really obviously more impactful to um, people of color, particularly African Americans. In Chicago, African Americans account for 67% of coronavirus deaths, despite making up just 32% of the city's population. It's the same story in Louisiana, where Gary Harrell has lost 10 family members and friends. You can't ignore it. Um, it, it just seems like so much. What I see is COVID-19 exposing, in a very stark fashion, U.S. racism. Dr. Kamara Jones is an epidemiologist at Harvard and says decades of inequality are taking their toll on communities that have less access to health care in populations with more underlying health conditions. There's another factor, too. They don't have the kinds of jobs, you know, on the whole, where they can just shelter in place and work from home. They're doing the front facing home health care aid, bus driving, sanitation work, maintenance work in the hospitals. 84% of Latinos in the U.S. work in essential jobs. In some states, Latinos are contracting coronavirus at a rate three times higher than average. Jose Gonzalez says there's pressure to take any work. We don't have the benefit of I should just stay home to, you know, not carry on that such a high risk. And I feel like that's every Latino at this point. Cities across the U.S. have now begun to consider race as part of coronavirus statistics, using that to better target resources. Wash your hands, wear gloves, and use a mask. In Baltimore, that's led to a push to get information out. The messaging, the public health guidance just simply was not penetrating uh, certain segments of our community. Communities that have been hit exceptionally hard 
by a virus that has taken an enormous toll. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington. The new series that goes inside the COVID-19 pandemic, from the front lines to the everyday heroes helping us cope with the unprecedented change. Coronavirus, the new reality. A Global News special, Sundays at 7 on Global.